So uh, let's let's expect God to keep doing what God is doing. I think it's just the beginning. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him God's just getting started in me. Amen. God's just getting started in me. All right. We're going to, uh, I've been, been working or waiting to preach uh, on this passage uh, for at least a couple weeks. Our last uh, uh, time we were together as leaders, we had a, a wonderful leadership retreat with a lot of our folks, and I walked them through this passage of scripture, and this passage of scripture has been on my heart. Many of you know that we have this thing called creating, that this year is a year where we are committing ourselves to creating whatever God has placed in our imagination. Scripture says that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. And so there is a certain kind of opportunity for you and I to get some power cultivating inside of us. Because if we can grow the power of God inside of us, how many of you know that what you think and imagine, God says, I'm able to come alongside you and help you get it done in 2018? Hallelujah. And so part of what I'm hoping we are feeling well positioned to do from here on out is to see that God wants to create something in you and I this year. And in order for God to create, that means we have to be available for God to do some work. Amen. Oh, it's a quiet church in here today. Amen. Now, you know, you may have grown up thinking that God will just force God's self on you, but God, you know, doesn't, doesn't do that. God kind of you know, prods and, and, and shows up and gives you an opportunity to say, yes, Lord. Now, as life would have it, when you don't say yes to God, God, you know, just kind of keeps coming back because life has a way of changing your no to a yes. Uh. Anybody experienced that before? It was like you kept telling God, no, 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 no. And God said, okay, well, life, you know, life, you know. As, as my dad say, Father Time has never lost a case. Amen. Life will just keep coming back, and your no turns to a maybe, and then your maybe turns to a yes. And how many know the more you say yes to God, the more your life begins to be transformed in ways that bring glory to God? And so what I'm hoping today uh, for us to dive into is Really imagining that now that we have, as a community and uh, certainly followers of Jesus here at The Way, have engaged in this season of consecration. I know some of you may, may be sitting there like, oh, pastor, I didn't do the consecration. That's okay. We did it for you. <laughs> Touch your neighbor. Amen. So, you know, uh, you can get in on this blessing because none of us, we ain't no stingy Jesus followers up in here. Like, oh, you didn't do it, so you don't get the blessing. No, I'm, I'm glad it don't work like that, or I wouldn't get a whole lot of blessings. It was up to, up to me. But I will tell you that as a community and as a church, we said we were consecrating for our families. We were consecrating for our communities. We we're consecrating for these systems and, 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 and these forms of oppression uh, that are waging war against our soul, our body, our minds. We're consecrating for our marriages and our relationships between parents and children and, 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 and generations. We, we, we were asking God to help catalyze our imagination for something that God can do 2018. So I think we're going to spend a little bit of time in the scripture today and just uh, see how the scripture challenges us uh, to move forward. Romans chapter number eight is where we'll start uh, today. So I invite you to turn your attention to the screen or certainly you can uh, follow along uh, in your own Bibles. You can go online, go to the Bible app. If you don't have a Bible app, you should download one because that'll be a great blessing to you. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and if you don't have that, then you should go to your browser, just type in Bible.com. It'll come up. And if that's too much work, just look at the screen. Touch your neighbor. Amen. And uh, it'll be a good opportunity for us 
to read the text together. The book of Romans written certainly by uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul. And uh, Paul wrote this letter, most people uh, believe, while he was in jail in Rome. So this is like Paul's letter from jail to the church in Rome. And uh, if you keep it real, uh, most of the Bible, if, if, if not all of it, let me see, can I think of, uh, you know, they all were written by folk we would call ex-convicts. Touch your neighbor somebody, so amen. You ought you to ought, you ought create a little space, praise God, for how God can meet folk wherever they are, amen. Some say, well, oh, Pastor Mike, they, were, they weren't in there for doing the wrong thing. Well, how many know sometimes, Lord, I'm about to get on the tangent, but I'm a, what's legal and what's not legal aren't always changing, praise God. You know, it was illegal back then to, to, to preach Jesus, and that's why they was in and up in jail. And uh, one could argue today that the reason why some of us have gone to jail um, is maybe we did something that we had no business, maybe we did something we were supposed to be doing and folk didn't like it. Amen. But either way, it doesn't matter how you get to a place. I believe it's all about can you meet God there because God is everywhere. And anybody ever been in trouble and you met God in trouble? Amen. You're just like, wow. I, hey, God, how you doing? It's like, yeah, I'm doing all right. You know, meet you in the trouble time, meet you in the good times, meet you wherever you are. So Paul wrote this letter uh, to the church in Rome. And many think that uh, uh, Romans is a theological account of the good news of Jesus. If the early gospels were indeed a, uh, a narrative account, this is a theological account in the book of Romans. We find some of the first uh, rich theological concepts like grace, amen, and, 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 and uh, 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 propitiation and, you know, these, these nice theological terms that, that you, you don't really find developed in very many places but they become the bedrock for how we understand the work of Jesus to be applied to our lives. So uh, the book of Romans helps you and I to understand that the work of Jesus is not just about um, the stories that are told, but it's also about the activity of God in our lives. Romans chapter number 8, verse I believe 18 is where we'll start. And the scriptures uh, simply declare this. That's why this is Paul talking to the church in Rome, a church under attack by the Roman Empire because of their unwillingness to move away from the teachings of Jesus. Paul says to them, that's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation, somebody say everything, everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Oh, this guy, Paul, he know how to write some stuff, amen. Meanwhile, somebody say meanwhile, meanwhile. the joyful anticipation deepens. Keep reading verse 22. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pangs. But it's not only around us, it's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing us within. We're also feeling the birth pains, and these sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become, and the more joyful our expectancy. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit 
is right alongside helping us along. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So we're going to just keep talking about creating, but I want to talk about endless possibilities today. Possibilities, endless possibilities. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and the hearers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Somebody holler, I've got endless possibilities. Tell your neighbor, you've got endless possibilities. Tell the person behind you, you too now, you've got it. You've got endless possibilities. One of the greatest, most difficult challenges for, I'd say, much of, you know, created sentient beings, human beings, if you will, is to see beyond the limitations of our created selves. That uh, I was captivated by this essay or article that talked about how NASA was doing this uh, uh, assessment or test that was trying to measure the creativity of its astronauts and its, you know, folk who worked in the space program. And, you know, long story short, the, the test showed that people's level of creativity, not only was it different, it, it was very pronounced um, as educated, more, that more educated folks got, the, the less creativity remained. So they tried to test this a little bit more and, 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 and they started to give the test to four and five year olds. And as they gave the test to four and five year olds, they found this off the chart level, particularly in genius kids, of creativity and problem solving that was off the charts. And they said, well, this is interesting. So they said, well, we'll just keep testing you as you go along. And they, they came to this conclusion that the longer some of these children stayed in a regularly traditional structured educational program, that the least amount of ingenuity and imagination was retained. That in many respects, the educational system, life, circumstances, are literally draining many of us, the longer we live, from the creativity the creative power that God has uniquely seeded in you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I was so just, I, I was captivated by it, and I started sending this to all my educator friends because it was the first time I heard it uh, or at least read that NASA was, was working on this because, you know, my wife's an education, you know, expert guru, and we got a few other folks, Tiff, Dr. T soon to be Dr. Tiffany Johnson. I got another Tiffany Jones, Blakes, and yeah, Antonio said, yeah, all my friends, you know, they education folk. So I started to send it to them, and they was like, oh, yeah, well, this is kind of common knowledge. I was like, what? <laughs> it's common knowledge that we have systems that are literally draining you of your creativity, dumbing you down because, you know, they can't handle all that you bring into the table. As a four or five-year-old, 
Now this, this, this sheds a whole lot of light on my life, praise God. Because, you know, when I was four or five-year-old, I was kind of told I was a little bit of a piece of work. <laughs> you know, I, I would see things and, and I would be drawn to them. I would in, be in stores and, and I didn't have a concept that you couldn't, you know, touch things and, and <laughs> maneuver with them if you didn't buy it yet. I didn't have that sense. So I would always be looking for a problem to solve, or as my parents often say, a problem to create. <laughs> and, and, and I remember that my mom, or maybe it was my grandmother, uh, my mom's mom, she, she would take me to the store, and she, I was getting so much stuff, she would say, Michael, when we go to the store, I want you to put your hands in your pockets. Do I have any other folk who parents told you you got to walk around the store with your hands in your pockets? <laughs> so here I am walking around the store, and my hands just won't stay still because I see things, and I'm just like, ooh, I got to just reach out and touch that. <laughs> there are a few times where, you know, I, 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 I became overwhelmed, and I would grab a hold to the thing, and and uh, sometimes I'd tear it up. And, and I remember one time, me and my mom, we was in uh, Montgomery Wards. You know, remember know anything about Montgomery Wards? Yeah. <laughs> Montgomery Wards, praise God. Y'all don't know, you see, y'all don't know nothing. See, y'all don't know about the Montgomery Wards. <laughs> Montgomery Wards was, was, was Target before there was a Target. <laughs> when well, you needed some, we needed some pants, you went to Montgomery Wards. Everything you can find in Montgomery Wards. Anyway, I was in Montgomery Wards with my mom, and, and I, I seen something on a big shelf, and I couldn't reach it, so I just kept jumping. I think my mom was paying for something, and I reached up, and I grabbed it, but I actually pulled everything else off the shelf, too. And it was glass, and it all broke. And my mom just grabbed me, and we ran out the store. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Told you to keep your hands in your pockets, Michael. I was like, oh, I'm just, just trying to reach up and touch something. <laughs> that energy that I often exhibited bled in all kind of different places, of course. And, 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 and I, I share that to kind of, you know, make light of it, but also to help us all appreciate how hard it can be when you have all this energy that you are just bubbling over with and you can't always control it, and then that gets problematized rather than explored. So we see our education system today where all of a sudden you have all these young folk in an educational system, and of course there's some of us who can adjust to this kind of way of learning, but then you have a good number of folk who just, you know, they can't, it's just too much. It's like, I, I, I need to move, I, I need to explore, I need to, I need to not sit down, and you know, and, 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 and then, you know, they, instead of us figuring out a way to develop a system to cultivate the energy, we label them as a problem. Now, of course, I'm not trying to hate on any teachers because I, I was I, I'm, I'm still an educator and some so just not in the classroom. I have to deal with a lot of folk with a lot of energy, and it's a lot of it can be very exhausting. You're dealing with folk who just got so much energy they can't sit down, they can't follow instructions, they just you know moving on a whole nother plane. You ever met somebody you, you like you on you on one station and they are obviously on the next, <laughs> <laughs> and you thinking we all supposed to be vibing. But it ain't a lot of vibing going on. There's a lot of, lot of in, in, you know, uh, dissonance, praise God. So, so I'm, I'm not trying to make light of the challenge of teaching or education, but I am trying to lift up that I think many of us could go back in our life and remember a moment or two where our creativity and the energy and the joy and, 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 and that which cannot be uh, contained uh, naturally, you were kind of taught to domesticate and put it under wraps to make other folk feel comfortable with you. 
Mm, anybody? You know, maybe one or two, thank God. All right. Uh, and so p- part of what I, I believe God may want to be doing for some of us in this year is helping us to not suppress what must be disciplined. Because it ain't that helpful for you or me to just follow every whim that comes <laughs> through my mind. Amen. You know, I have some moments where I'd be in a situation and the things that go through my mind would 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 make you shudder like, Pastor Mike, you know, I'd be in meetings with folk and I see I get angry enough and I could just I could just see things. <laughs> Amen. And 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 I've had to learn to channel what I'm seeing to discipline what I'm feeling. So I don't blow up the meeting. <laughs> or worse, a person, praise God. How many of you know that there are some, some things in our lives that rather than suppressing them, you have to learn how to discipline them. Discipline them. Not everything you feel should just be unleashed into the universe. Hello, somebody. Man, like going back, like there was nothing necessarily wrong with me wanting to reach up and grab that that toy that's on uh, the shelf that is out of my reach. There's nothing wrong with that, but the urge of me wanting to do it at all costs where I'm climbing up glass shelves. <laughs> I, I need to be able to discipline that urge, not feel bad for wanting to reach for the toy. Hello, somebody. In this year, some of us are finding ourselves, I think, carrying some residue from 2017 because we have not yet been able to differentiate between that which God has placed in you as a gift and those impulses or practices that keep disqualifying you because you haven't yet learned to bring, as the scripture says, your flesh into subjection. Who Paul now, you know, Paul who wrote this in another text, he says that I have to beat my body into subjection. Now he was talking about fasting and spiritual discipline. He wasn't like self-flagellating himself. And, is that a word? Flagellating? Flag- flagellation? Thank you, all my doctorate <laughs> folk with GREs. <laughs> GRE vocabulary. I'm a fake one, praise God. I just make up words and hope they stick. God's not asking you to to punish yourself. God's calling on you and I to discipline ourselves. The consecration is a project-based spiritual discipline boot camp. It's helping you discipline yourself so you can be ready for the overflow. For the thing that God is calling you to live into, the endless possibilities that God has in store for those who can unleash through the power of the Spirit a disciplined follower of Jesus. And it is indeed the case that all of us have the ability to create something. The idea that you who have been created by the uncreated one cannot create something is a lie that has been told to you by someone who means you no good. You have the ability to create something. I don't know necessarily what it is, but isn't it interesting that folks are willing to Tell you what you can create so you can remain a consumer of what they create. They want to lock you in a a consumer uh, role in your life when God's called you to be a creator. Hmm. In your family, on your job, in your school, 
with yourself. You don't have to just walk around consuming everything that other folks are creating for you. Don't you know that there are folks out here who are creating a jail cell for some of our children? I refuse to consume what they've created. <laughs> folks out here creating all kinds of pathologies, ideologies, ideas that will serve as a virus in your mind, a torment in your spirit that will rob you of your inherent divine gift to create. And when you lose the ability and the belief God has placed inside you to create, then you will always be taking something that someone else with their limited imagination has created that you have to fit into. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to be in touch with the endless possibilities. People say, oh, Pastor Mike, how is it that, that you really believe that, that, that justice or salvation or hope or healing can happen when all of this stuff is going on that suggests the opposite? It's because I really believe in the endless possibilities that flow from the divine. I believe when the scripture says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. I mean, I believe that thing. I mean, I believe it so much that I'm just willing to walk around here looking like a fool. This is this way. Well, you just give it some time. This ain't gonna happen here. Just give it some time. I remember when we first got here to Berkeley, they used to tell us all the stuff we couldn't do. Oh, you ain't going to be able to stop this virus. You ain't going to be able to stop this school stuff. You ain't going to be able to stop that. I said, okay, just give us some time. Matter of fact, I loved it when people told us we weren't going to be able to do. Yeah. And me, sister Nancy, a few of us, we were out here, and people tell us what we ain't going to do. I'm like, oh, just get your popcorn ready. Man, just get, get your little fr front row seat. <laughs> Praise God. You would have done better to just wish us well. Well, I don't know. Good, good luck. But the moment you formed your lips, to tell the children of God what can't be done. That's how I know God's getting ready to do something. Woo. Can you just give your neighbor a high five and tell him God's getting ready to do something that will blow your mind. Amen. It'll, it'll make a believer. God, God will do something so great that folk will be like, wow, your God must be real. Like I told you now. So the question for many of us in the season where we're trying to move from what we think is impossible to living in the possibilities, because that is a shift in the transition. Some of us are so, so convinced about what we can't do that we don't even have time to imagine what we can do. Life has been so hard, you can't imagine that you could do this because folk always tell me what you can't do. This is why oppression is such a terrible thing. Poverty is such a terrible thing. There's all these kinds of interesting studies about how, how poverty and lack changes our brain chemistry. Because when you live a life that is overdetermined by scarcity, when you have been created to be abundant and what you don't have, you've been created to create it. But rather than you creating what's not there, you sitting there just determined by what you see. Child of God, I want you to understand that this is a moment and a season where you and I are being asked and invited to be creators of that which has not yet happened. We are not being called to be passive participants in someone else's project of scarcity. But we are being called to create out of that which God has given us, that which can be a blessing to everybody. Now be clear, God's not telling you to create something just so you and your homies can get the hookup. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, that, that kind of capitalistic, uh, 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 me for and no more, uh, 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 exploitative kind of, kind of way of life is demonic not how God creates. When God created the world, 
The scripture says that God created it with enough. Now that's that's quite a word. Enough. Abundance. That means there's no lack. The only way that God can give you abundance and it turns into scarcity is if you are greedy. The problem with many of us is we greedy. We and we 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 mad about every other sin except for greed. <laughs> Ain't that something? Oh, we can preach a message on everything, boy. Oh, I preach it on. I preach it on who you're sleeping with. I preach it on who you don't like. I pre- uh, your, the race. I preach it. I preach it. I preach it on if you're smoking and drinking. I pre and and no, those are sermons. They all right to preach, amen. Because if it's in the book, but when you get to greed, it get real silent. No, <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, I grew. I just grew. I didn't grow up with a lot, though, so I'm just trying to store stuff on for a rainy. <laughs> like that is scripture. Not ask you to do that. Scripture not ask you to make so much that you can store it up for generations. That's one kind of a rainy day that your children's children's children. The scripture said it like this. God told Abraham, "I'm going to bless you, so you can bless everybody." All these biblical literates out here be talking about, oh, I'm a, uh, this, I'm a, uh, what they call it, I'm a, I'm a, 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 a biblical, biblical values. You, you got biblical values for everything except for not being greedy. When it comes to being greedy, you got an excuse. Kind of like the rich man with Jesus. Jesus told the rich man, listen, this is what I want you to do. The rich man came to Jesus. Jesus, I've done everything you asked me to do. I've I've, 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 I've kept every part of the law. Jesus said, you shall sure have, except for just one thing, No, Ain't that something? He, Jesus just met the guy. <laughs> Jesus didn't even get into an argument with him about if he kept the law or not. I guess he, met, he must have been faithful. But Jesus said, if there's one thing you got to do, he's like, okay, Jesus, tell me, because, you know, I'm, I'm a rider. I'm, I'm ready to rock with you. I'm trying to be faithful. And Jesus said, you got to sell everything that you have. <laughs> Give it to the poor. Come and follow me. The scripture says that he turned around, (laughs) shook his head, and he walked away from Jesus. Now, that's some kind of description. And it's easy, you know, it's like, oh, if I had a million dollars, I'd give it away. You ain't got a million dollars, so we don't know what you're going to do. Hello, somebody. Oh, if I was this, I'd do that. But you're not that. <laughs> so let's, let's bring it on down to what you are, to what you have. And let's ask this very provocative question. If Jesus asks you to give up, what is that you treasure that you don't think you can live without, would your response be, turn around, shake your head, and walk away? I don't know who it is. I don't know what, what the boo's name is. I don't know what your check, the, your job. I don't know what it is. But how many know all of us got something that we ain't willing to give, give away to Jesus? Folks be like, I'll give this up. I'll give this up. That's not your struggle. What are you willing to give up? Because often that which we are holding is taking the place of that which God wants you to have. One of the great problems with our country right now is that folks are trying to hold on to a nostalgic, insufficient vision of a society. Everybody for the time I want to make America great again, it wasn't good for you back then. It wasn't good for you back then. You was broke. Half of you couldn't participate in anything. But somebody tricked you into believing that their scarcity was eventually going to trickle down to you. So you can hold on to something that you did not create. God did not create it that way. So what does it mean for you and I to be ready in 2018 to the endless possibilities? First thing that I'll say real quick, you got to get ready to use the now for what's next. 
Somebody say, use the now now. for what's next. next. The scripture says there's no comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. Now, too many of us, I will say, are often being held hostage in the now. When God is trying to set you up for what's next. So what's happening to us right now can become so overwhelming to our senses and to our circumstance that we can be imprisoned by what's going on now and forget that God is actually creating a now moment for a what's next opportunity. God is looking for some dreamers in this room. Some folk who can see those things that are not as though they are and believe that whatever is happening right now, God is setting me up for this next season and phase. That I'm not just in trouble right now so I can remain in trouble the rest of my life. We're not experiencing all this injustice right now so we can just become so pessimistic that we will not see justice happening in the future. My family's not just struggling right now so I can't have hope that things are going to turn around in the future. No, the devil is a lie. God is telling you and I that what's happening now cannot compare. can't compare. Think about this. It can't compare. That means how bad you think it is now. God's saying it won't even compare. Jesus. To what is going to be revealed in due time. Ooh, but you know what that means? That means some of us got to have the ability to anticipate things before they happen. Some of us have to start to cultivate the creativity that life has sucked out of you at an early age. That trouble has stumped out in your spirit. That disappointment has trained you to have such low expectations uh, that you think that things are going to stay the way that they are for the rest of your life. No, the devil is a lie. How can they stay the same when God says it won't compare? some folk out here be like oh that preacher is just in a long line of folk who just sell the people all that opiates for the masses but they didn't sit in their own life they are always preparing for what's next they want you to be locked into the now while they are preparing for generations from now don't you know they're folk all across the world who ain't thinking about their money today they thinking about their grandchildren's money And they want you to get locked into this narrative of scarcity and deficit and want you to think that you are supposed to be oppressed and you are supposed to be depressed and you are supposed to be without. When God says that I've created you to be above and not beneath the head and not the tail. So it's good for them to have these ideas about what can happen. For them to build plans for their children's children. While they make sure your imagination and my imagination stay so small that we can't even see what tomorrow holds. That's why hope is the flashlight down the street of despair. If you keep your hope, you'll always find your way. When I was in Venice and I was walking through, this, through the city, Venice has all these little back streets that, that I, I did not appreciate until I started to walk them. And it's, it's, it's these real thin streets with little bit of lights. And, 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 and that's, I guess, what people feel is what makes Venice, Venice, Italy. Now I'm talking about Italy. I'm not talking about Venice, Los Angeles or, or California. I'm talking about Italy, amen. And you walking through these thin, narrow streets with very little light, and, 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 and sometimes I had to take my phone out and just turn the light on my phone so I could see where I was going. 
that little bit of light on my phone in a dark place traveled much further than I ever imagined. Some of us have to believe that the little light you have, the little hope you have, can get you out of these lost back alleys of life <laughs> that folk have designed to keep you walking in circles. No, child of God. You got to be somebody who is able to get your imagination catalyzed to believe that whatever's going on right now it ain't nothing but a setup for what's getting ready to happen next. It's a setup. Somebody say it's a setup. It's a setup. And, and, and because it's a setup, I got an anticipation growing on the inside of me. I, I, I love in verse 22 or 23, it says that, that, that it's, it's not just the difficult times of pain that are, are, are around us, but, but it's the spirit of God that is moving within us. And our sterile bodies, our bodies that feel like they can't produce much, are being stirred to believe that I can do more than what is happening right now. So first, first question that, that, that I want you to wrestle with, are you being held hostage in the now? How can you be set up for what's next? Where in your life are you locked behind the bars of what's happening now. When God is actually trying to open up the possibilities of what's next. In what ways do you see God cultivating anticipation inside of you? I don't know about you, but I ask God every day, Lord, help me to see beyond what I can see. Help me to be driven with such, you can call it discernment, innovation, creativity, that I can see trouble before trouble comes. I can see opportunity before opportunity comes. I can see healing before healing shows up. I can see hope, I can see victory, I can see you moving before the full manifestation. Because there ain't nothing like being the first person to declare what others are late to experience. How many of you ever been on your job and you, you, you had this little instinct? It was like, oh, this, this, this didn't. And everybody like, ah, that ain't going to happen. We have it all the time. We be doing the work in the community and folks be like, that ain't going to happen. Then when it happened in a press conference, you know, in the front. Yep, I, I remember when I, we, was, we said it was going to happen. You look at them like, man, you. Ambulance chasing headline. But. Keep it real, even they know. That's why I don't argue with people about credit. Because even the folk trying to take the credit always know where the credit really lies. And, and Trip, you can always replicate what you have produced. <laughs> Most folks be trying to take credit for what you do on your job, and then your boss say, okay, do it again. They <laughs> say, um, uh. <laughs> I don't know, boss man, it was a lightning, a lightning don't strike twice in, in, in the same place. Like, oh, okay. I can do it again. Oh, all right, all right. Why don't you go sit down over in the corner, uh, Mr. Ro uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 Memorex, and let's let Mr. Replication, Mr. Copycat, and let's get the person with the real deal. Don't argue, don't, you don't gotta fuss and fight about that stuff. You make sure that you are cultivating your ability to see what you can't see and then act on it. Second thing I think the scripture lifts up as I, as I hasten to my conclusion, you gotta grow while we wait. Grow, somebody say grow while we wait. Now, now verse number 22, 23, we are enlarged in the waiting. Now this, the imagery here is, 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 is you know, a pregnant woman 
uh, that, that, that obviously in the first early parts of the pregnancy, uh, you know, you, you know, see the little baby bump and you always in that phase, like you like, you don't want to say something cause you don't want to like be offensive. And you're like, are you pregnant? It's like, no, it's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. But then, but then, you know, but, but you know, sometimes you'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to wait a couple months to ask because you know, a couple months from now, it will be very apparent. You, you'll know that that's not, you know, those little extra burritos and Twinkies and donuts, amen, because the longer you wait for that which has been put inside you, it will be undeniable to everybody. Some of us got to be sure that we are enlarging while we wait in healthy ways. It is such a tragedy, and you know, dear sister Erica Garner was, we lost her in, in December, and we talked a little bit about this real briefly, but you know, uh, the, 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 the mortality rate for African American women in this country is, you know, women, black women die and giving birth at higher rates than everybody else, for all kinds of reasons, you know, and it, it, it is not, it's not a deficiency in medicine, the, the technology of medicine, it's, there's all kind of external forces, stress, things that are just weighing on the bodies and the minds, and then you get into the hospitals and doctors act like they don't know what to do. Like, you know, black folk, we aliens with a different biology than everybody else. You know, the research says when we, we go into doctors and we, we have pain, doctors prescribe less pain medicine to black patients. <laughs> Did y'all know that? They, they don't think they don't think we telling the truth or something, or they or they think that we have the ability to withstand pain more. Well, I guess we supernatural in that way. I told a police officer one time. I said we are not uh, superhuman, neither are we subhuman. Amen. You can't be pumping me with talking about I, I had to shoot you 20 times because I didn't know if the, if the bullets was going to stop you the first time. I said, well, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, ain't nobody walk around here. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the brother in the, in the uh, uh, Luke Cage? Ain't no Luke Cage folk out here. I mean, you just, da -da -da, and I'm just like, Man. it's not happening. But neither, not superhuman, neither are I subhuman where you can just Treat me any old kind of way. We're human beings. Guess what? That's a gift. It's a gift that we're human beings because that's how God created us as human beings. But isn't it so fascinating that if we don't take care of ourselves in our humanity while we grow, we could be dying. That all growth don't equal health. But the scripture says that we are being enlarged while we wait. So again, if we take the example of a pregnancy, it makes sense, right? That which is within you is growing, and, but it must be nurtured. When, 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 when uh, Sharice was pregnant with the babies, hey man, the first, the, first, the first time, you know, we went to every appointment. I think we made up some appointments. <laughs> we used every appointment because, you know, we want to make sure everything was all right. Because it was obvious something was growing on the inside. But we had to do our part to steward what was growing. 2018, you have to make sure that you are taking good care of what God is putting inside of you. Yeah. What God is putting in your hands. Because there are people who will not value what God has placed in your hands. They won't value your family, they won't value your marriage, they won't value your career, they won't value your dreams and aspirations. So if they won't value it, and you won't value it, that thing is gonna die. But God is trying to get some of us, you know, how many of us had some things in 2017, he was like, I'm glad 17's over, because I'm in 18. Yeah, and he was, oh, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, yes Lord. But what if, what if 
the drama in 17 was because you weren't willing, hello somebody, to go to every appointment like you should have gone to because you didn't value what was placed in your hand. So how do you grow while you wait? We just went through the consecration. I'm telling you, you got to consecrate for the rest of your life, although you probably should <laughs> consecrate more than you do now. Amen. But prayer, it's a good thing to do to make sure that you can be growing healthily while you wait. Putting the promises of God, the word of God, the ideas and the concepts of God in your heart so you can grow while you wait. Oh, I don't ever understand what they're saying in the scripture. You sure enough understand what they're saying on them rap albums and <laughs> in them novels and on the news. Hello, somebody. So if you can teach yourself how to understand what they're talking about, you can train yourself to understand what God is talking about. <laughs> but you got you to gotta train yourself. The consecration is an opportunity for you to train yourself. Somebody say, I got to train myself. It, it's true. You got to, sometimes when you, when you first start following Jesus, you're like, man, Jesus, this is crazy. You want me to forgive him? Do you know him? I mean, you see how trifling he is? I be something around this guy all the time, and he just, you asking me to forgive him? And Jesus, man, Jesus, you asking too much. What if I just don't mess with him? How about that? I'm just not going to be messing with him. But I, I used to try that. Oh, I'm just not going to mess with you. But keep it real. People that I don't like, whenever I see them, something happens. <laughs> just, my, I, I be having all these different kind of feelings. This is what happens when you harbor resentment. Right? You, you think that your resentment <laughs> is hurting them. And it may be having an impact on them. Because some of us know how to be so petty, we can make folk feel real bad. Right? Like, oh, I can't wait to see her. I can't wait to see them. Because they're going to know how I feel. And, and you know, it's like when you get done, then it's all this and all that. And, 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 but, 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 but when you don't forgive, it's like you eating rat poison and hoping they die. That's what unforgiveness is like. You eating rat poison. <laughs> and then you sit there waiting on them to die. <laughs> Come on, you're not dying fast enough. You got fevers, you choking, you can't walk, and you trying to figure out why is it that they walking around here and they just happy, and you walk around here like you carrying a cross up the hill? Coco Gotha! It puts a whole different spin on why Jesus says, forgive your enemies, 70 times seven. Jesus ain't worried about your enemies more as much he's worried about you. But you gotta train yourself. Lord, no, I'm still learning because there's about three or four people I can think of right now. I, I'd be telling them it's gonna take the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All three in one to just help me not to be in my feelings. But I feel worse off. I feel like I gotta go take a shower after being around you because I'm just so, I just feel so, so burdened down. That is not the will of God. And it don't have to be that way. I'm, I'm belaboring this point. I don't know why. Maybe some of you need to hear this. Because it is easier to love the people you like than it is to like the people you don't love. And we got to learn that there's a price to pay when we don't follow Jesus' ways. I'm way over time. Let's stand to our feet. We, we, we got a couple more weeks to pick this up. But part of what I hope we appreciate as we end this consecration that there is an opportunity for all of us to lean into some possibilities. Possibilities that you may not yet have fully been able to realize. One of the things I love about the, the last scripture that 
maybe I'll hit on a little bit next week is it says that the Holy Spirit is right alongside. Right alongside you to help you while you're waiting. And, and you know, they call them things doulas, right? Trained folk that can help you bring birth to birth what's inside of you. Trained folk, not no, you know, folk that just woke up one day and said, I think I'm an expert. Somebody who's certified. Guess what? You got a certifiable presence that's right alongside you in your life. And the question is, will you let that presence, that Holy Spirit, help you in this season of your life? We're coming off the consecration. Can the spirit that has been hopefully aligning you with God's purposes, can you lean into that? Can you let go of whatever it is that may be keeping you holding on to stuff that you can't handle? This is what is laying before us today. It's all within your reach. The creativity, the power of God. God calling some of us to let 2018 be a year where we're creating, not allowing the creativity to be sucked out of us. Come on, grab the hand of someone next to you. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the storm when I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then. When I let go and I let God. Come on, say, let go, let go, and let God, let God. You gotta let it go, let go, and let God, let God, let go, let go, and let God, let God, let go, let go, and let God, let God. Say it again, let go, let go, and let God. Let God let it go. Let go and let God. Let God let go. Let go and let God. Let God. You gotta let it go. Let go and let God. As soon as I stop worrying, soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story. When I let go and I let go. That's when things start happening. When things start happening. When I stop looking at back then. When I stop looking at back then. When I let go, say I let go and I let God. Let God have his way. God bless the loved one whose hand I'm touching today. God, I pray that possibilities will be endless for them. As we move from this season of consecration, many of us individually were very clear on what we needed to have set apart for your special purposes. Some of us didn't participate like we wanted to, but all of us know that 2018 must be a different year with alignment and creativity unleashed for your purposes. The loved one who I'm touching may have a struggle today, may have a burden, an issue, a challenge. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll break the yoke in their life. Squeeze their hand real gently. I pray, God, that you will give them strength, a strength that compensates for their weakness. In a world that you created to be abundant, but we still experience lack, give them enough. Give them enough 
for their family, enough for their job, enough for their relationship, enough for their physical body, enough for their bills, enough for their school, enough for their career. Give them enough. Somebody say enough, God. Give them enough, Lord God, so they don't have to walk around without when you've given them enough. Give them enough for peace of mind. Give them enough for joy unspeakable. Give them enough for power and strength and victory. Give them enough. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands right where you're standing. It's me, oh Lord, and I'm standing in the need of prayer. It is not my mother, it is not my father, it is not my sister, nor is it my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, and I need you. Visit my situation. Touch me, God. Make my heart glad. Make my mind at ease. Strengthen my spirit. Heal my body. Hallelujah. Give me what I need, God. I know you can do it because you've done it so many times before. Save my soul from destruction. Forgive me of my sins. Lord God, make me brand new. Somebody say, make me new, Lord. Whatever it is that I'm holding on to, lift your hands, everybody, and just start releasing it into the air. I release it today. I refuse to carry it any longer. I refuse to hold on to it. And every day, God, I'm going to keep releasing to you that which is trying to hold me back from my destiny, that which is trying to keep me from being faithful to my call. God, I'm going to release it. And now grab, just grab. God, I'm grabbing peace and I'm grabbing power. I'm grabbing hope. I'm grabbing forgiveness. I'm grabbing victory. I'm grabbing love and joy. I'm grabbing peace of mind. I'm grabbing joy. Hallelujah, I'm grabbing it right now because you said it's mine. In the name of Jesus. And so we count it as done. Somebody holler, it's done, Lord. Lord, I declare that what's happening today will be a setup for next time. Lord, I pray that whatever I'm going through today will not compare. Help me to keep, Lord God, that in mind in the name of Jesus and we'll say yes Lord can you just lift your hands for a few moments and say yes Lord, yes, Lord. all over the building say yes Lord. yes Lord come on say it again yes Lord, yes, Lord. sometimes that's all you just gotta say say yes Lord, yes, Lord. say it again yes Lord. yes Lord say it again yes Lord yes. say it again yes Lord my soul says yes my mind says yes come on every brother every man in the house lift your hands and say yes Lord God I say yes Lord God, I, I surrender my will to you, yes, Lord. I surrender my appetite to you, yes, Lord. I surrender my worry to you, yes, Lord. I surrender my mind to you, yes, Lord. My appetite, all these things, I surrender it to you, Lord. And I'm asking you to have your way. Have your way, have your way. In me, in Jesus' name we pray. Hug two or three people and tell them you've got endless possibilities. Tell them that God has given you endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. The world is at your fingertips because God has made it so. So live like it. Live like it in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands. Come on if you believe that. God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I live in this way Woo. hallelujah God bless you today we're getting ready to leave I pray that as you break the consecration some of us are running to the meat shop amen you run into Baskin Robbins and Hostess and you just can't wait amen your, your, your lips is dry and you you just salivating I hope as you break the fast listen I hope as we end our consecration, I hope that you keep in your mind everything God spoke to you during this season. What good is it to hear from God and forget what God said? Hello, somebody. Scripture says, amen, that the person that hears the word of God and doesn't do it is like someone who beholds their image in a mirror. 
and walks away and forgets what they saw. Like, what was the point of looking in the mirror if you weren't going to remember what you had on? What's the point of going through 21 days of consecrating? And you're just going to go right back to the same mess that you was asking God to get you out of. Use the power that you stored up and built during this consecration and let's catapult into something better and greater. Let's ask God, God, use me in 18 in a different kind of way. Let my family be. Let my job, my mind, my calling. God is able to do it. Do I have any believers in here that believe God is able to do it? Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God is. Yes, God is. Yes, God is. God bless you today. Listen, real quick, anybody want to join the way today? You may not have a church home. You want to say, I want to make the consecration. I want to join the way and, 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 and let this be one of my acts. Somebody got baptized. I want to join the way. Is there anyone that want to say, I want to be a part of this super dope? follower of followers of Jesus if that's you come on out of your seat and meet me right here at the front come on up here you coming are you coming yes touch your name anyone else want to come join the way yes I see another coming anyone else anyone else want to come join the way yes come on come on there's room for you there's room for you there's room for you amen amen the Bible says if you're planted in the house of God, you'll flourish in the courts of God. Amen. But we thank God. We, we thank God. Go ahead. You can do it. Amen. We're going to anoint them and just have them introduce themselves to us real quick. We, we, we know this, dear heart, because she just got baptized. Amen. Filled with the power. Come on. Stand right here. Stand right here. We'll start here. Tell us your name and where you're from. Peter is my name. I'm originally from Kenya. Kenya. Touch your neighbor. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm loving how the diaspora is meeting at the way. Hi. I'm Fahima Mustafa from Philadelphia. Philly. Touch your neighbor. Kenya and Philly in the house. All right. Stretch your right hand forward, everybody. We're going to pray a special prayer, a blessing and covering over these, our newest family members and loved ones at the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you said in your word you would add daily those that should be added. You'd add them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. So God, I pray that you will bless them in ways that are undeniable. I pray, God, that you'll bless them, Lord God, to have nothing but victory and power and no defeat. I pray that you will cancel every appointment of the enemy, Lord God, that has been made. I pray that you will close every door they must be closed and open up every door for their lives. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands, everybody. Let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Go see Sister. Sister. Jennifer.